Welcome back to Nate the Hate. You're listening to us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcast. Joining me today, as always, is my co-hosting mate, MV Gamer. I mean, modern vintage gamer. <laughs> What's going on, mate? Great to be here. I know you're. I know you're teasing me about a particular article that was written about me in. Uh, I think it was VG Gamer or VGC, one of those one of those websites where I was referred to as MV Gamer instead of MVG which is hilarious <laughs> it was hilarious they didn't they couldn't commit to one way they're like I'll, i want to shorten it but i just don't know where i want to do it <laughs> so we got the very awkward acronym mv gamer <laughs> <laughs> and today's episode is dedicated to shamsa who continues to shower this channel with support and generosity your gift has been received and it is truly humbling and overwhelming the amount of support you have shown us over this last year. I am really humbled by everything you have done for this channel and know that you do have my sincerest thanks and gratitude for everything you have done. So everyone should give a round of applause for Shamsa for everything that she does for this channel and for those she reaches out to in YouTube and the community. So thank you, Shamsa, once again. Absolutely. I truly do appreciate Absolutely. It. Th thank you, Shamsa. You're, you're, uh, you're awesome. Shout outs. Yes, awesome is just a fraction of the word that could be used to describe the amazing generosity Shamsa has shown. And for today's topic, we are going to talk about the recent Capcom leak and what it means for Nintendo in 2021 and beyond, because there was a lot of information from this leak and it impacts pretty much every platform out there. We have games coming to Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. We have new game information that hasn't even been given a platform. We have information about Stadia. And a lot of this information actually has Nintendo involved in some way. And that's interesting because a lot of people have been quite heavy in critique when it comes to Capcom support for Nintendo and specifically the Switch. And it seems like maybe that's going to change in the very near future. So first thing in this leak is that there was a mention of a brand new multiplayer Resident Evil game that was internally referred to as Project Highway or Village Online, and it's a battle royale of some sort. But Highway was also the codename of Resident Evil Resistance. So this could just be a expansion on Resistance with a new battle royale mode that could tie into Resident Evil Village yeah. when that game comes out next year. It's interesting to see Capcom approach Battle Royale. We've seen them do multiplayer games, whether it's, uh, what was it, Umbrella Corps or Operation Raccoon City. They have tried this numerous times, and they've never really found success with the model they have implemented. But Battle Royale, maybe if you are playing for Umbrella or you are a member of Stars or any one of the numerous agencies that Resident Evil has introduced over the years, it has potential. Maybe one side's zombies and tyrants and liquors. Mm -hmm. It has potential. We really don't know anything about it yet. But it is it is curious to see Capcom continue to explore this avenue. It was originally slated for September of 2021. We don't know if COVID or if internal delays have happened. Some of the information in these documents is out of date. But September 2021 was at least the original plan, likely to coincide with Tokyo Game Show. But we'll find out as, you know, 2021 gets closer. And then another game mentioned in the documents, and this is for Switch and it's coming to other platforms. Originally slated for May for the other platforms, February for Switch, is a project codenamed Guillotine. This is the one that's got me intrigued, Nate. Yeah, it has my interest too, because Guillotine really isn't that specific. It could be really any project, and sometimes code names don't actually mean anything. It's just a random word. But my first thought was maybe Resident Evil Revelations 3. Yeah, it, it's kind of got a Resident Evil vibe to the name, but you're right, it could it could really be anything. I mean, you know, think about a Capcom game that has guillotines in it. I mean, could could be anything from, from their past catalog. I mean... Yes. You know, it could be Beautiful it, Joe 3, for all we know. It could... It, I, <laughs> it's very very difficult to speculate what that could be um it also could be a brand new ip that they're that they're you know they're spinning up as well 
Um, but if I was to speculate, I do think it's something from their past. And I would probably say it's something in the Resident Evil kind of vein because, you know, we think about Resident Evil, we think about guillotines. I think that makes sense to me. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what, what comes out of that. And hopefully it's not something that that was was shelved as well. Like you said, some of this information is not necessarily out of date, but it's it may not be current up to date. Um, you know, a lot of projects do get greenlit and then they don't they don't make it. But hopefully we'll we'll see something come out next year. Yeah, I mean, that's the curious thing is that it mentioned that it was supposed to come to Switch in February of 2021. And, you know, that's only a few months away from now. And it seems like if it, if it was a big release, something like a Resident Evil Revelations 3, it probably should have been revealed by now if it was still slated for February. So maybe the game has been delayed a slight bit and that is holding off an announcement. Then when, again, we do have the Game Awards coming up in just yes, a few weeks yes and you know capcom isn't shy about going to such an event to present a brand new game so maybe guillotine shows up then and i do agree with you i think it's something from their back catalog whether it's a resident you know resident evil revelations 3 type of game maybe something else you know it's exciting to see that they are bringing a brand new game to the switch because we've seen resident evil 2 remake resident evil 3 remake all skip switch when they come to other platforms and this seems like maybe this could start a new trend where Capcom does see the value of the Switch. And I believe one of the leaked slides actually has Capcom specifically say Switch is the most important platform in Japan due to the user base yep. and just sales. Absolutely. So, I mean, we just saw the launch of the PS5 and the Xbox Series S this week. Yes. Obviously, the numbers were were a lot lower, I guess, than than anticipated but we have to remember of course that there's a worldwide shortage of these systems and uh -huh. japan is is no different but yeah i mean the switch is absolutely crucial to capcom's plans in in 2021 no no question yes i mean it does seem as though the playstation 5 or sony to be specific is shifting away from focusing on the japanese market and the ps5 is a kind of a clear indication of that but if you're a studio like Capcom, you have shifted a lot of your resources to making games more Western oriented. We can look to Monster Hunter World as a prime example of that. But they still value the Japanese market. So maybe Guillotine is something that the Japanese audience is going to resonate more to. And that's why Switch is apparently the first platform to get it while the other ones get it a few months later. So it could be something that the Japanese market is really going to favor over Western markets. But we'll find out when the game is officially released. You mentioned the Game Awards. What about Nintendo yeah. Direct in January and they announce it then? Ooh. Just go back, Nintendo... go back to the old style of Directs, you know? <laughs> if Nintendo could get a general Direct ready for early next year, it would be the perfect venue for Capcom to highlight another major release. If it, let's say it hasn't been delayed, then it's probably the perfect timing. Because there's nothing in the documents that suggest it is a retail game. Right. So it could be a digital game. You just need like that six to eight week window. So yeah, direct early next year would be a perfect time for it. And Nintendo can kind of prop it up as even, even a timed exclusive, even if it is only for two or three months and get that nice surge of sales. But yeah, Capcom definitely has a few marketing choices ahead of them if the game is coming out in February because we are running low on time. But yeah. We just simply don't know if it's been delayed or not. Take a guess. What what what, what game is it? Oh boy, Guillotine. I mean, Guillotine makes you think of death. Yep. Um, part of me wants to say something like Devil May Cry, but the fact that it's come to other platforms removes that option from my mind because well, they did find a leak of the Devil May Cry Two source code on on the same leak. I mean, sure, it's in a it's in a folder, you know, probably on a different server somewhere. <laughs> May not be related, but the other thing you mentioned, Nate, was Umbrella Chronicles. They found the Wii source code for that as well. So, is this all connected? Ooh. Who knows? I, I would assume that they are not connected. So I'm gonna go crazy. I'm a. This is my wish because it was one of my favorite PlayStation Two games, Maximo <gasps> in HD. Oh, that's a good pick, actually. I mean, the I guess the 
ghosts and goblins or the ghouls and ghosts um theme around that that could be yeah. uh, that, that's a good one maximo I mean, collection they, maximo collection would be really cool and hey if what if it's an hd of the uh, ghouls and ghosts from the psp remember Ooh. when they had that line where they went back to some of their older franchises like mega man and power stone and i mean maybe it's something like that but i mean this is just this is pie in the sky hopes <laughs> i would be okay with any of that that you just said so let's 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 yeah. hope that uh, we we see something maybe it's a brand new onimusha that'd be okay too the- Oh, guillotine though yeah oh. i mean it, it 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 does fit it's it's one of those code names and and you're right nate usually the code name has no connection to the game that's being developed at all it's kind of there to not mislead i, I want to say but it's there you know just it's just an it's just a, a name usually so it really could be could be anything but um i, I would be happy with anything that that capcom went back into their catalog of of awesome games from the 90s and the early 2000s and, and brought back for us. Because I think the code name for Monster Hunter Rise was Snow based on these documents. And as far as I can tell, the game really doesn't have anything to do with Snow. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's it. They just kind of assign things for code names. But for leaks like yeah. this, when, when there is a leak, they, they have some level of protection that people don't really know what, what they're talking about. Yeah, if you can only speculate, but it's definitely exciting to see Capcom does have a brand new project coming to Switch early next year because they've really only supported the platform with a lot of ports thus far. Uh, then we had Resident Evil 4 for Oculus VR. This, and one, this one was weird. It is weird because it has nothing to do with the Resident Evil 4 remake project. Right. This apparently is just Resident Evil 4 that's available on every system since the GameCube in VR. Yeah, I, and, I wonder if they, you know, there's, they obviously had a lot of success with Resident Evil 7 VR on the PS4. And yep. I wonder if they're coming up with a, I'll say a port, right, to Oculus of Resident Evil 4 that has yeah. a similar feel to it in VR. I think it's interesting. But, I mean, my question is, why the Oculus Rift and why not the PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation 5, you know? That's a good question. Even, and I know people are going to laugh at this, even Labo. Might work. Why, like, yeah. Resident Evil 4, I don't know how well that's going to translate into VR beyond just you are the third person camera. So, similar to what we saw at Breath of the Wild VR, you're just hovering above and you just have that free reign camera. And then, like, aiming will be a lot better because if you play Resident Evil 4 on the Wii, you could just pop heads with ease. Yeah. It actually made the game too simple. You lost that tension because it was just boom, boom, boom. And when you play it on a standard controller, you have that kind of slow movement of aiming. So it's an interesting project. I love Resident Evil 4. I wouldn't buy an Oculus to play this, unfortunately. So hopefully they find success. I mean, I think Resident Evil 7 in VR was a fantastic experience, and I hope all future Resident Evil games have some form of VR support because it it can translate well. It really heightened that sense of terror and tension in Resident Evil 7. So I have hopes, but I don't know if Resident Evil 4 was necessarily the best project to implement VR into. Yeah. But I could see that was just a cheap experiment. For me, this seems like one of those, let's take a look at it, but I don't necessarily think this is a product as in Mm -hmm. something they're planning on selling or releasing at some point. This is more of a... I don't want to say proof of concept, but it's a let's let's investigate this and see what we can do. And it just doesn't feel like this is something that they will end up releasing. But I could be wrong, of course. We will find out. (laughs) And then we have the great Ace Attorney 1 and 2 is going to get Western localization for PlayStation 4, Switch and Steam. It will have quality of life additions like trophy support. And it'll have dual audio for the Japanese release, English audio for overseas. It looks like it'll be priced at $40. And it looks like it's going to be announced in April, released in July. And then they confirmed that Ace Attorney 7 is in development. And the original targeted release was for the third quarter of fiscal year 2021. They are considering ports of the of four through six of the Ace Attorney series. 
and it's going to depend on the performance of the other games. And we also had Street Fighter VI leak to some detail in these documents. So pretty much, I would say, everything for 2021 for Capcom seemed to leak in this initial batch of information. Now, this was a leak that I believe totaled in the area of one terabyte of information, and this first round of leaks was only somewhere in the area of 60 to 75 gigabytes. So we yep. don't even have a tenth of the information yet. Yeah. And that's... the. I think the interesting thing about this is that Capcom was basically issued a ransom. Yep. The hackers who stole this information said we want somewhere in the area of 10 million plus in Bitcoin. And Capcom said, no, we don't negotiate with terrorists. And they said, we warned you, and they dropped the information. And Capcom did come out with an official statement about the leaks. And they are pursuing all their legal avenues to track down the hackers, stop the flow of information. So if you have seen slides on the internet, you have likely seen them taken down by now just due to legal ramifications. But the information itself is going to spread. And a lot of the information is, I'd say, private in nature. Some of this was salary information. Some of this was resume. It's really information that nobody outside of the company needs to know. So that's why we're just going to talk about the game stuff. Yeah, which which is, I think, you're right, Nate. I mean, I made a video on this, and I, I pretty much echoed everything you just said. It's, it's very unfortunate when these things happen. Usually corporate entities, corp- biz- big corporate companies like Capcom, they're never going to negotiate or they're never going to give in to a ransomware gang no matter what's at stake unless it's literally the missile launch codes you know what i mean for for um you know you know for the their defense system right i mean even then i would say that that they're not going to give in to to um you know a ransomware gang usually when this stuff happens there is a procedure that that gets followed now unfortunately it doesn't mean that things don't get leaked i mean the i guess the the fallout from this is yes this gang does allegedly sit on one terabyte worth of data they've only leaked out 60 gigabytes of that so far so there may be more to come it seems like their motivation however is not about leaking video game information it's really just about damaging the company and that's where i i take exception to this kind of stuff i mean it's obviously um it's very bad when these things happen but it doesn't seem like you know they they care about what they're doing um you know they're not like holding the the personal information but leaking the video game information they're leaking the entire thing and that's that's where you know it it gets really really tricky for me but um i i I do want to touch on a couple of things here nate the the source code leaks there was devil may cry 2 which we mentioned there was uh, the Umbrella Chronicles, and there was also the Misadventures of Tron Bond for the PlayStation 1, which not many <laughs> outlets picked up on uh, that wasn't really discussed very much. Now, you could say, well, they were just random things found on the file system, you know, because it's Capcom's file system, their network, no big deal. But the the timestamps for these things were, you know, back in October of this year, so are we to believe that these were just random things found on their file system or do you think there is maybe some type of work that was being done to devil may cry 2 there's always there's already been a a you know they've already brought that game back to the ps4 and the and the switch i believe right so that's already come and gone but is it possible that they are looking at maybe a remake of some of their older games as well based on, on these source code leaks, or do you think these, these are just, hey, they found what they found and there's a lot more to come and we, we're just kind of waiting to see what they leak next? Well, one thing I learned is that I've been saying the title of Tron of Tron Bon yep. wrong my entire life. I thought it was Tron Bone. Well, <laughs> like, the, like, the the, like the musical instrument? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I kind of go back and forth, but I, I think I watched a, a Let's Play of it maybe a month ago. And someone said Tronbon, and I was like, "That that seems to be the right right way to say it." But it could be Trombone. I mean, that makes yeah, sense. I guess it could go either way. But um, for Devil May Cry two and Umbrella Chronicles, as far as like remakes go, I Devil May Cry two, I don't know. 
I could see where you would want to remake that game because it is not well received. It was such a hyped sequel back when it originally came out and it just didn't live up to that hype. Devil May Cry 1 was a fantastic game and 2, it just seemed to lose all of that essence and everything that you wanted the game to be and it came back with Devil May Cry 3. So 2 could use a remake, but would you really want to remake 2 without remaking 1? Yeah. Or remaking that original trilogy? That's a good point. That's kind of where I would sit there and struggle with that. Umbrella Chronicles? I loved Umbrella Chronicles. I think a light gun Resident Evil game, when done correctly, has great success. And now if you implement that type of game into like a VR setting, you can kind of increase the appeal of it. Because I look at something like Until Dawn on PlayStation VR. And that was a fantastic VR game where it was a basically a light gun shooter. And if you put a Resident Evil like on Umbrella Chronicles in that exact same setting, I'd be all over it, especially on this, you know, these next gen systems with the PlayStation 5, which will have VR support. So I could see them maybe considering doing a VR version of that, but maybe maybe it's for Oculus because we do have possible. Resident Evil 4 leak. Yep. So it could be something they're considering there for Tronbon. <laughs> does anyone actually? If you don't play like Marvel versus Capcom, does anyone remember this franchise? Not really, unless you you know you like Mega Man Legends, I guess the original one. You you're probably familiar yeah. with it, but yeah, I mean that. You're right. I mean, sure, th- these are probably th- random things that were picked up along the way, but the Devil May Cry 2 thing, I I, I just, I guess I struggle with a little bit because it's the PS2 version of the game, which came out, what, in like 1999? I, I didn't know when, when a game came out, but it's been a long time, right? Um, well, yeah, it's probably been about 20 years, maybe a little less than 20 years now. So it's like, well, what is what's what's the the PS2 source code of an, a really old game doing sitting on a file system when, you know, most of the source code from those games back in that in those eras were thrown away anyway. So I wonder Konami. if you know they had it they had it staged for a particular reason. But again, you know, we we don't necessarily know. Yeah. Um, you know, could be it could just be a it's probably nothing. Yeah. And if the hackers thought le- leaking the source code of Devil May Cry 2 is a big deal, I think they bet on the wrong horse. I would agree. It's yeah. Devil May Cry 2. It's not really a game. People are like, yo, we got the source code. No, it's, it's Devil May Cry 2. Yeah. If you like deleted the source code, someone would probably say thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little harsh, but I, 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 get, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're and, saying. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that seemed to get a lot of attention is that people were, some people were shocked to see that Stadia or Google paid Capcom $10 million to put Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil Village on the platform. And this is actually a very standard industry practice. You have a brand new platform, you want third party games, and the best way to court them is to say, we're going to pay you to bring the game over. Every platform holder has done this. Microsoft did it with the original Xbox. Nintendo has done it. I believe they did it with the Switch, where they either gave some sort of financial support or even development support to bring certain games over the platform. Games like Doom, Nintendo published for Bethesda. And I believe they also published Elder Scrolls Skyrim. And that was their way of saying, we want these games on our platform. What do you need? To make it happen well we'll cover manufacturing so this is very standard there's nothing shocking here for stadia or google to reach out and pay capcom to bring games over and sony also paid capcom in the area of five million dollars for resident evil 7 vr and again that's another industry standard yeah i i don't think there's anything any major surprise here you know stadia gets a bit of a raw deal and a lot of it is self-inflicted, no question about it. Um, but look, Stadia is is a an option for a lot of these companies, you know. And and Capcom have dabbled with the whole cloud experience before. They've already released Resident Evil on the Switch, albeit in Japan, the the cloud edition. So they're no they're no strangers to to dabbling with this stuff. So I I think look, it's not a, a, a massive surprise here. And I don't think it's, I don't really think it's a big deal. I don't think it's like big news that that Capcom is bringing Resident Evil games to Stadia. You know, 
even though Stadia, like I said, does seem like it's it's getting, um, you know, it's it's it's. I don't want to say it's on its last legs. That's not that's that's completely false. I think Stadia definitely has more life in it. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, um, you're right. You know, if there is a way to to partner with companies like Capcom, Ubisoft, Bethesda to get games onto Stadia, then Google is going to start throwing money around. And that's that's the way the industry works. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, especially when you have a platform that you don't know the future of, you don't know if it's going to be a success, you have to break out that checkbook and you have to start writing checks to these big companies to bring over these big games to convince the people that I'm going to you know, invest in this platform as a consumer because you have all these major third parties, you have a wide array of indie software. So I want to invest in you and the, you know, you spend money to make money. And that's what Google was doing with, you know, here, I don't think having Resident Evil 7 or having Resident Evil Village come to Stadia is going to sway a lot of consumers, but you have to take that risk. And, you know, for $10 million, I'd say you're getting some great quality with these two games. So it really wasn't that big of an investment, especially for a company like Google. If we were talking like a hundred million dollars, I'd say, wow, they really ambitious here. Yeah. But we have like Game Pass. Microsoft writes right. a check to these companies to put their games on Game Pass. Yeah. And that's what they want. They want to create that service that you then subscribe to because it has, you know, the best offerings of software. It's the best value in gaming. And Microsoft has to spend money to make money through subscriptions. So it's just, it's a standard industry practice, really not surprising. And like we said, every company does this. Yeah. And I guess the last thing I want to say about Stadia, at least for for this discussion is, look, as much as you, for for the listeners that, that criticize, you know, Stadia and, and cloud services, I mean, we're already seeing the, the increase in installation sizes for next gen we're already talking about maxing out our PS5 SSD and our Xbox Series X SSD and external storage is is expensive and and you know you can't even you can't even put external storage on your PS5 right now <laughs> some people just want to press a button and launch a game you know without having to worry about installs and 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 bandwidth and download speeds and moving files around there's definitely there is definitely a market of people that's all that they care about. You know, just the average person that wants to play video games, not, not you and me, Nate, that, that, you know, we, we want, we want, you know, the latest and greatest tech, right. But there yep. is that person that has a big TV in their house and they, they love, they love video games, but they don't necessarily care about having a game system. They just want to play games and, there is definitely a market for that. X Cloud obviously is is the big one, but Stadia is still there. And look, I still think Stadia does have a place. And you know, if if Capcom's jumping on board, then it it's going to give them a lot more respect. And I think um, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out next year. I think Stadia is kind of a case of you were too soon. Yeah. The market wasn't ready for this type of platform yet. If you maybe came out five years later. You might have been in a better place, but the thing with the market is you have to introduce the idea first to see how it responds and you have to allow them to adapt and you know grow to accept such a radical idea. Like we have cloud on the switch with just control and Resident Evil 7 and Assassin's Creed. And we're not sure how the reception is going to be. I do know several people who have bought control to play it on switch and their experience has been enjoyable. They like the idea that they can play the game on the go. And once you introduce these ideas and you get that conversation going, that's when the market begins to evolve. So Stadia really could just be a product that's five years early and Microsoft has positioned themselves in a far stronger spot with xCloud by having it have access to some of the games on Game Pass in your personal Xbox collection and having it on phones and tablets. And we know their ambitions are they want it on TVs, computers, every screen that you could possibly have in front of you, they want xCloud on. And that's a really ambitious idea. And Microsoft is going to push hard with this. And in five years time, I could feasibly maybe see myself playing, I'll say like a Gears tactic on my cell phone 
I'm not going to want to play Halo or anything on my phone, especially with the convoluted controller pieces you need. But I could see my play self playing, you know, a tactics game or a slower paced type title on my phone straight on xCloud from, you know, Microsoft servers. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. The cloud is still very in its infancy. It's going to grow up. Yeah, I, 10, I, 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 think, I think the cloud, in, in order for the cloud to grow up, it, it has to be in a, in a way where the, the average person doesn't even know they're connecting to the cloud and playing the game, you know? Like, they can't even distinguish whether it's... Yeah, if it's that seamless. Yeah. And right now, it's still mm. not quite quite there yet. Like, you still have to jump through hoops to get there. And, and uh, you know, so I, yeah. I think you're right. I think Stadia did come in a little too soon. Um, they were essentially beta testing as they launched. Mm-hmm. Then there was that ridiculous thing about developers wanting to go to people's houses and, and play stadia together all that sort of stuff it didn't it didn't help yeah. it didn't help them at all but you know we'll, we'll see how that goes for them i mean i could i could see a company like netflix dive into cloud gaming because i i'm actually not a subscriber to netflix but i remember one of my friends she was telling me i believe it was the show black mirror mm-hmm. where you could make choices in the episode kind yeah. of like a walking dead game it was interactive so if you somehow, and I believe they were looking into actually bringing some games to Netflix to, in some form. I think it was the Walking Dead games. If you do that over the cloud where people can play these story-based games, or all of a sudden Netflix just sells you a controller. You log into your Netflix account, you go to the game section, it streams the game to it, and it's for no additional charge. You could see that casual audience really expand into cloud gaming, but you need almost that exact type of delivery system to have it happen. Stadia simply isn't there yet because you need yeah. you need the Chromecast. You yep. need, and unfortunately, the one little thing like a Chromecast is enough of a barrier to somebody. Absolutely, because people don't know what that is. They're like, "Well, what is this? And right. and why am I plugging yeah, this into a, my TV and yeah, all that stuff?" Dongle in. I just want to turn my TV on and have an app on my smart TV that just says X Cloud. Click yeah. on it. Boom! I'm gaming, and that might be Microsoft's next move. And that's where if they can do that, Microsoft will have a very strong footing in cloud gaming moving forward. But I guess that's a topic for a different day. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had Resident Evil Village had a lot of details leak. And I'd say the biggest is that it's going to be a current gen release. This game was originally positioned as a PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X title and not a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One title. And I... I'm not surprised by this. Are you shocked that this is coming to current platforms? No, Nate. I mean, I mean, look, this is we we just started like literally last week. We started <laughs> the new generation. So, yep. I mean, think about think about the developers and and how much time they've had with dev kits. Like they they've had probably no time. So, the the game has started development on last gen and what i mean by that is ps4 and xbox one so yeah i mean the game was built on on that hardware and they're probably now just tuning it for next gen so yeah i mean this this was always going to come out for you know ps4 and xbox for me yeah and especially if this information hasn't changed it was slated for an april launch so i mean within those first six months of a new generation you're going to have a lot of cross-gen releases so it makes sense. You want that bigger install base because this is obviously a triple A budget type product. You need strong sales to make back that money. You need to recoup millions upon millions of dollars. And you simply can't do it relying solely on the Xbox Series X, S, and PlayStation 5. Because even by April, we're probably only looking at an install base across those two systems of maybe in the area of... 30 35 million yeah i would say so and it'll be interesting to see when when the day comes where you can just jump on amazon and buy a ps5 or an xbox series x without you know it saying currently unavailable you know where you can just get one when you feel like getting one i think it's i think yeah, we're, we're still months away from that so i think you're right i think they they definitely want to get that market for the game and and that market is going to be ps4 and xbox one Yes, absolutely, because I believe Microsoft just came out and said, realistically, we're probably looking until April to when you can get an X without too much concern. Sony with the PlayStation 5, we really don't know. 
because we've had mixed reports of how much they're planning to ship this fiscal year. Sony hadn't changed theirs, but you had reports saying it was like 15 to 20 million units. And Sony was like, no, that's not accurate. And it seems like the launches were kind of handled. They were mishandled. Yeah. People were putting in orders. Orders were getting delayed. Other orders were getting canceled. And even if you, I believe if you put in an order on some websites, I think it was Walmart, they're saying you might get it at the end of the month. You might get it early December. So there's definitely a lot of moving parts to these launches. And it's really tough to really nail down when they're going to be readily available. But I'd say April, April, May of next year, you might be able to easily go online and shop and pick up a system. Don't go to eBay and drop $1,500 on it. Wait a few months and just spend retail. Yeah. And just on that real quick, I know today is the launch of the PlayStation 5 in the UK. So yes. best of luck to uh, and congratulations to uh our listeners that, that have picked one up hopefully your uh, your day one story is is a good one and you're not waiting around for uh, whatever shipping company to get you your system and it's hopefully not delayed too much but let us know in the comments yes let us know in the comments and hopefully the only struggles you are facing today on your playstation 5 is demon souls <laughs> <laughs> absolutely now we're going to shift into the big story of these leaks and i would say the big story of these leaks are nintendo and capcom because in it we have monster hunter rise which is coming to switch in march of next year and in the leaks it has the information that monster hunter rise is also coming to pc so Mm -hmm. in essence i guess you could say the switch is losing one of its biggest exclusives of 2021 because it's coming to pc which was slated for October. So we're looking at like a six month timed exclusive to Switch. And the only reason I could say this is happening is because Monster Hunter World did fantastic on Steam and PC. Yes. So do you think with this leak now out there that Monster Hunter Rise on Switch could see less sales or do you think this is kind of a non-factor? Um, I don't think it's a big deal. Like again you know switch is kind of its own thing and it always has been even though you know it will lose that exclusivity i would say Mm -hmm. that this is really just complementing their sales rather than you know diluting um the switch in this regard i i don't think there's any cause for concern here i mean it's it's just going to be you know it's the cost of doing business it's one of those things where bring it to the pc won't really overlap with anything and I think I think you know Capcom knows exactly what they're doing, and I think it's it's a good move for them. What what are your thoughts? I think it's a good move for them because I would imagine it's just going to be a case of double dipping. Yeah, that's how I kind of see this as yeah. well. Because I would imagine the majority of people who are going to play Monster Hunter, especially in Japan, want it for that portable factor. You want to play it on the go. You want to play it with your friends during you know commutes and stuff because that's what made Monster Hunter such a big deal in Japan when it came to PSP. Coming to PC, it's going to be those who have their new, you know, 3080T graphics card. Yeah, you exactly. want to see this game, all that visual splendor, but you lose the portable element. Right. And the Switch has performed admirably despite its hardware limitations. People can still dock the game. It'll look fine. It'll play well. You play it on the go. The PC market is a completely different audience. I also wonder if it's more for the streaming element. I mean, obviously you can stream on a switch. I'm not saying you can't, but you know, you can, you can just set up a live stream on, on your PC and everything and, and, and stream the game at, at, you know, at 4k and all that stuff. You know, I wonder if it's geared more for the streamers. Could be something like that. And one feature that I do hope is implemented is that we've seen a lot of PC games allow for cross save between switch and steam. So if you have that here, people might buy it on the Switch for these first you know, five, six months, build up hundreds upon hundreds of hours of playtime, transfer over to the PC, and then instead of playing it docked, they'll play it you know, there on their PC, then they'll play it on the go. And that might be Capcom's plan there. I think it is a case of just double dipping. Yeah, They want to sell 10 million copies on Switch, yeah. sell a few million copies on PC, best of both worlds, neither hurt each other. They complement each other. 
I agree. I mean, I, I see this very similar to what Sony does with, you know, with their games, mm -hmm. Horizon and Death Stranding, yeah. bringing those games to PC. Some of the games like um, the uh, David Cage games as well, bring those to PC, Beyond Two Souls. I mean, yeah. you're just complementing the sales that you already have and it's definitely a smart move. And you're right. I mean, a lot of people have high-end PCs and they want to experience these games with you know with maxed out settings and this is one one way to experience that for sure yeah I mean it seems like it's a pure win for Capcom and it's it is interesting that it's taken developers this long to see the value in PC because this is kind of like a new development all of a sudden you see Microsoft and Sony Capcom Atlas saying we can sell a lot of copies of our games on PC and Steam and it's been like a revelation for them so it does seem like the Japanese audience or the Japanese market is, well, not the Japanese market, Japanese developers are finally seeing that value. So I'd say this is probably the standard moving forward. And interestingly enough, it is going to be the standard for at least Monster Hunter because Monster Hunter Stories is also coming to PC. And it looks like it is. it was targeting a June 2021 release for Switch and PC. Now, Monster Hunter Stories started on the 3DS. The first game was out on that. It was a interesting little game it was kind of it's more casual it's more like kid friendly than the standard monster hunter game so to see this to come to pc is a curious development i would say because when i think of pc gamers i think of an older audience i don't think of like a 10 or 12 year old sitting down at their pc playing games but that's i was never a pc gamer so i might be completely wrong here yeah but yeah monster hunter is going to share switch and pc and now the big big story which i haven't really seen a lot of people talk about is that in these documents we've seen mentions of ps5 xbox series x but there is one piece of hardware th that has been long discussed and rumored and you and i are guilty of this we thought maybe masa hunter rise would be the title to launch this piece of hardware it is the lack of a mention of a switch revision there is no mention of a switch pro yeah it's what do you make of this like I, i'm trying to i'm trying to come up with a a thought process to explain this you know mm -hmm. like we're almost certainly going to get new hardware next year based yes. on i mean with this smoke this fire right we've seen the bloomberg articles we've seen the wall street journal we've seen um the president of Nintendo even subtly speculate yes. that there's there's hardware being developed right now, yet we would we would expect to see something from this Capcom leak that talks about in some capacity, you know, a Switch Pro or or next generation Switch hardware in the same light as like you said, information was was found on PS5 and xbox series x and right now mm -hmm. you know this leak occurred after the launch of those systems so it doesn't really seem to hold that much weight but if this leak occurred say a month ago before the launch of those systems everyone would be really really you know excited about what was found yet we haven't found anything about the switch pro and i think that is very curious and nate i want to hear your take on this what, what does this mean you know this is not something capcom had scrubbed off their hard drive before the leak this <laughs> this is something that you know based on again this is only 60 gigabytes of one terabyte worth of data uh -huh. doesn't seem to exist and if it doesn't exist well why doesn't it exist and when do we expect it to exist? So I, I, I want to hear your take on this because I'm very interested. Based on the information that has been presented in the leaks thus far, I would say that when you, myself, and Jeffrey Grubb discussed the idea that maybe we haven't heard about a Monster Hunter Rise hardware bundle with Switch, it was an indicator that maybe they're waiting for the Switch Pro and they're going to bundle that. And we had speculated maybe it would be March or April. I'd say we can close the door on that. Yes, I agree. This, the complete lack of a mention of a Switch Pro in these documents to me suggests that when Capcom came out several weeks ago and said, we are not aware of a Switch revision or new hardware from Nintendo, but if it does come, you know, we will be supporters of it. 
to me, they were telling the truth. They are not aware of any Switch revision. They're not aware of any plans from Nintendo to introduce new hardware in 2021 as of now or as of when these documents were written up and had plans. Right. So it could be a case as simple as the developers haven't been briefed yet. Nintendo has not sat them down and said, we're introducing a Switch revision in 2021. Here's the hardware differences. We plan to deliver dev kits at this point. Please make plans with some of your upcoming software that's coming to Switch to include this. And it could be that simple because if it is a revision, as we have said, probably just an increase in clocks to stabilize a game like Monster Hunter Rise at a more steady, let's say 60 frames a second, 1080p locked while docked, or 720p while playing handheld. And if it does have 4K features, whether it's upscaling or DLSS, as a developer, you may not need that much lead time. It could be as simple as we're launching this hardware in September, we'll give you a dev kit in June. We don't need to brief you yet. We can brief you in May. We can brief you at GDC, yeah. which you know is typically around March, depending how everything is happening next year. It could just be a case of that, and they really don't have any knowledge of Nintendo's hardware ambitions for 2021. But it it really stood out to me when they had so much information about 2021 planning, and there was just no mention of Nintendo hardware. Because as you mentioned, we have and we had Bloomberg, we had Wall Street Journal, we had Furukawa come out and say, you know, I have nothing to say right now, but we're always working on something. And there's just nothing in I think, any of this. I think the other thing to keep in mind is Nintendo themselves have been subject to leaks. Mm -hmm. um, and all of them have resulted because of third parties as far as gaining access via a third party server and then yes. you know, accessing Nintendo information. I do wonder if Nintendo has been a lot more stringent with, with working with their partners on information and what they provide you know what i'm saying so like yeah. maybe this is more of a verbal conversation right now or maybe it's a, 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 a you know information or, or things that are happening that don't have a paper trail on a file server somewhere there's there's mm -hmm. definitely things to consider here because yeah nintendo i mean they they got hit pretty badly with with their leaks and they haven't responded in the public eye because that's that's their nature. They they never acknowledge stuff like that. But you can you can damn well know that they are doing and they've done all sorts of due diligence and and tightening of security around pretty much everything. Anytime they work with a, a partner, I think the the security around that is a lot tighter than it used to be. So whether that means they no longer distribute, you know, slide decks and, and PDF files and stuff because they potentially could result in leaks like this, then maybe that's what they're doing. You know, maybe this is more of a, like, you know, a verbal conversation right now or maybe some other means of communication to get this information to, to their partners. Yeah, it could just be a conversation between higher-ups. I'm yeah. saying, hey, we do have these plans. We'll let you know down the line. But maybe if you guys could, you know, just in the back of your minds, keep it in mind for maybe any new games you're developing. Like, I'll just use Street Fighter VI as the example. You guys work on Street Fighter VI, keep it in the mind that we are going to have a revision next year. We'll let you know when we can get dev kits out to you, but you're not going to, you're not jotting this down. You're not even sharing this information with your development team. It's just, you're still working without any knowledge. So the majority of the employees don't know. And that could be some, that could be why we don't see anything here. But it did. It just really stood out to me. Yeah, and I would say I wouldn't. We don't have to sound the alarms or anything. I still believe, unless COVID has messed up Nintendo's planning in a very major way, I do believe we will see the revisions in 2021. And it's just a question, you know, of it's a matter of when, not if. Because if you can't release a revision in 2021, I'd scrap planning altogether. Right. Because by 2023, you should have your next gen successor. I absolutely agree i yeah i i'm i don't read too much into this right now it, it is you know it's it's uh, it's the fact that it's not there does 
you know, seem very strange. But again, 60 gigabytes of one terabyte as well. It could well be in there. We just, we haven't uncovered it yet. So I think there's definitely more to come from this conversation. But look, I, I still am, am banking on new Switch hardware next year. You're right. Yes. It, it may not be as early as we thought because we were kind of speculating that, you know, it may get revealed around Q1 time next year, but it could be something that gets pushed back, like you said, due to COVID. Yeah, I mean, I've explored the idea, even when we've talked about this a couple of times for the timing, it would either be around the March, April window or potentially that September window, like they did with the light and the V2, because you want to lead it into like the, you know, the holidays, make that your big hardware pusher. And we don't know when Breath of the Wild 2 comes out. It just seemed like Monster Hunter made sense. Now, if I really want to speculate here, the PC version for Monster Hunter Rise is targeting October. What's to prevent Nintendo from having Monster Hunter Rise come to a Switch Pro in September? Yeah. And kind of be that high-end version right before the PC you know, version comes out, which is also going to be very high-end. But this way, the PC version doesn't completely outshine your Pro version. Nintendo still is ahead of it. Yeah. And it's just that the documents for these, you know, these specific games, like Monster Hunter Rise that mentions the PC version, just lacks any mention of a pro version in development or in consideration. And that's that's the only kind of red flag in my mind, but it's, it's a small red flag. If it was mentioned in these documents, Nintendo would be quite angry. Yeah. That would be a substantial leak that is beyond just Capcom. Now it involves Nintendo. And that's something you really don't want one of your third-party publishing partners to have on you, is that you're leaking new hardware. So I do anticipate brand new hardware from Nintendo or revision hardware from Nintendo in 2021. Maybe it comes out in some of these future leaks, but I think it is still a case Nintendo isn't really having these discussions with developers right now in a meaningful way beyond just, uh, hey, we have some plans for next year. We'll, we'll let you know when we really cement them and have an idea of when we can get you some development kits and we finalize some of those specs. Yeah. And typically that means it's nothing, it's not going to be that substantial because with the light and the V2, despite having brand new in internals and a new form factor, developers really weren't informed about this until I believe it was only around a couple, about a month or so before they were actually revealed. And then we know they came out in September. So it was a really quick turnaround from being informed to launch. And it's because nothing changed. Yeah. And Nintendo can always introduce new development profiles, especially if it is still based on the same hardware. If it's just a matter of up clocks, you don't need a brand new development kit early on. You, I just give you the specs saying your current dev kit will work. We're going to overclock it. Yeah. Just to, get, just to give you an idea of what to target. Yep. I mean, that's it's definitely viable. And, you know, Xbox have done that with, with the Xbox Series X. They just mm -hmm. added those profiles on the Xbox Scorpio dev kit. Obviously, you don't get the power of the SSD, but you still get, you know, you still get the, the clock speeds and, and all that stuff that, that you can start targeting. You can start targeting 4K resolutions. Obviously, nothing will be optimized. You'll you'll still need to optimize when you get new dev kit hardware, but you can definitely start going down that path. And and I think maybe that's what's happened here. I guess the other thing to, I guess you know, to talk about real quick on the leak is, this is a weird leak as well. I mean, yes. Devil May Cry, Tron, Bon, Umbrella <laughs> Chronicles, and these kind of random Capcom games. I mean, it just seems a little off, you know. Like like it's it's, and again, it's a small part. A, of a much bigger picture so maybe we'll, we'll see more of that if and when there are more leaks that come out yeah it was a very curious leak and really a company has never faced a leak this substantial nintendo continues to endure their own leak where we have the source code and development profiles dating back to n64 and even some game boy advance and gamecube games but the difference is those were old those are files, you know, 20, 25 years ago. Capcom's leak is now yeah. and in the future. This actually damages their marketing substantially. Absolutely. Because, like, everything's out there. So 
like we can use the Resident Evil Village for our current gen. That may have been information that they weren't going to relay for another. It could have been at the Game Awards. So, you know, we don't know. But even if it was another few weeks or another couple of months, now they're kind of sitting there saying, we're in recovery mode. Now we have to get this information out there. We have to clarify. We have to make this look good. Or even PC version of Monster Hunter Rise. Their original intent was obviously to make Monster Hunter Rise look like a Switch, a Switch exclusive. Yes. And now that's, out, out, that's no longer in play. So they have to position this game stronger when it comes out in March to really entice some of those Switch buyers who may have been on the edge of you know maybe hoping for a PC version. It's these are just unnecessary obstacles, and these are the dangers of like a of real leaks. I'm not talking about when an insider shares there's going to be a direct date or that anticipate an announcement of a game. That's just a slight hiccup to a marketing department saying. Oh, we were going to announce out tomorrow. It leaked. This is real. This is heavy. Mm -hmm. This potentially leaked an entire year of software. Yeah. And like we talked about like guillotine. And I guess we, you know, we're guilty of this ourselves. We speculated what it could be. We raised our own expectation for a product we don't know. So now if it is nothing that we talked about, we can't be disappointed in that. We shouldn't have known this project existed. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, none of this, none of this stuff could be green lit. I mean, right. none of this stuff may even happen. Cap and or, or, or on the flip side, Capcom may turn around and say, you know what? We need to start over. We, we need to we need to reschedule 2021's plans mm-hmm. based on this. I mean, this could go a number of different ways. I mean, we still feel very, very confident that Village is coming out next year. There's no reason why it won't. Yes. But other than that, I mean, the rest of it is kind of up in the air, I would say, for the most part. Yeah, because a lot of it was in the second half or late 2021, and now they may reevaluate certain things. I mean, looking at the lineup that had leaked, it looked like Capcom is going to have a really good year next year. Looks <laughs> I mean, like a new, new Resident Evil game, two Monster Hunters also coming to PC and Switch. We have, you know, potentially a battle royale of a Resident Evil game, a brand new project with Guillotine. Uh, the Ace Attorney games coming to the West, a brand new Ace Attorney game in development, finding out that potentially Street Fighter VI, we know it's in development now, maybe it was going to be revealed next year at Evo or something. Like That's a really good year for Capcom, and I mean, Capcom has been firing on all cylinders pretty much since, I'd say, Monster Hunter World Devil May Cry 5 released. I mean, yep. think about those few years, Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, I know it was a mixed reception, but they've been doing really well lately. And this is a company that five years, you know, five, six years ago, before Resident Evil 7 came out, people were really questioning their viability. Absolutely. Because they invested heavily into that mobile sector that didn't pay off. And all of a sudden, the company completely turned it around. And based on this lineup from these leaks, they're going to have a really good year next year if everything remains on schedule and COVID hasn't caused any delays or that this leak isn't causing any delays. So, I mean, I hope for Capcom's sake and gamers' sake, because there's some fantastic stuff here, we're not going to see such impacts. But leaks of this kind can have very big ripple effects. Absolutely. No question about that. Then we'll move into a Streamlab question. We have a question where we had a $5 donation from Skit Tittles. It says, hello, friends. I found myself over the weekend not having access to my Series X and needing to scratch my Yakuza itch. When do you think Microsoft will make your personal digital purchases available a la xCloud? How much work would it take on their end? It's probably as simple as just whitelisting the game. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't think there's much work involved. I think they just need to whitelist the game and, and we should be good. Yeah, I, I'd imagine they're going to do, I think they're doing a gradual rollout just to kind of their server end. They don't want to put everything up there. So they'll whitelist games gradually, but it'll definitely continue to expand and grow over time. We then had a dollar donation from Liam Warner, writes, Happy late birthday, Nate. Thank you, Liam. That's all the Streamlab questions for this week. If you'd like to support the channel, you can find the Streamlabs link in our description below. You can make a donation of any amount, ask a question, we'll answer it at the end of the episode. If you donate $100 or more, we will dedicate the episode to you. 
And today's episode was once again dedicated to Shamsa, who showed great generosity and support to the channel this week. We thank you again, Shamsa, for all that you do. And I'd like to thank MVG for joining me as always. Thanks for having me on, Nate. This was this was a fun conversation. I, lo I love these speculation type type discussions we have. They're my favorite. This this was a fun one, and I really looking forward to if guillotines anything that we said. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to be. Um, some dormant Capcom IP that we don't even remember. Like Tron Bone. Haunting Ground, maybe. Remember that oh, one? Gosh. No. <laughs> ha hey, Haunting Ground was a great PS2 game. I barely remember it. <laughs> they had a lot of PS2 games. They did. Man, Capcom back then was crazy. But <laughs> you can find MVG's YouTube channel linked in the description below. You can find his PlayStation 5 impressions and review also linked in the description below. And let us know your thoughts on the topic below and whether or not you have any concerns about a PlayStation, uh, I mean, a Switch Pro coming in 2021 due to the omission in the Capcom documents. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give the video a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, continue to embrace the hate. <laughs>